Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new episode of HGO, the show where we talk about everything that's hot in the world of games. I'm your host, Ethan, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host with the co-host, it's Hunter. Hey, Hunter, how's it going? Oh, it's going all right. I'm here to talk about a swell little... You yeah, failed, you failed. <laughs> swell yeah. little conference, my ass. Get the hell out, you yeah. failed. You uh, just sorry. like our recording the... sessions, you failed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pre the pre uh, show technical difficulties got me all. We've literally distracted. been in technical difficulty land for about twenty minutes trying to get everyone. Sam was supposed to be on the show today, but there were that many technical issues. He dipped to go and watch basketball instead, <laughs> and it fixed the issue. So there you go. <laughs> uh, I'm also joined by the Weeb Wonder himself. It's Kyle. Hey, Kyle, how you doing? You doing good? I'm Kyle, and I talk after Hunter. That's true. You always do. Hey, do you want me to bring you up first next time? I'll probably yeah, forget. You can do what you want, man. Hey, I'll it's your forget. show. Hey, it's our show. It's a communal show, except I do everything. Um, <laughs> and uh, rounding us out for the first time on the show, everybody welcome. It's Gary. Hey, Gary, how you doing? You doing good? Hey there. This is, as Ethan said, the first time I've been on the show. I'm not a special guest. I am actually no, part of this group. He's the worst guest, dude. He's the worst guest. Yeah, I am, I am the absolute worst person they could have asked for. It's true. It's, it's, it's true. It is true. How you doing, though? You doing good? Yeah, I've been doing good, uh, you know, general week. And well, yeah, stuff. there hasn't been a general week in the world of video games because we have had such great things as the PS5 conference. We had the Nintendo Direct that was very good for about three people, uh, Hunter included. So there you go. That's and, right. Uh, when then we also had the PS5 pre-order debacle of uh, 2020, the greatest show on earth, dude. Did you get your PS5? I got mine. Yeah, I got mine. Because uh, England wasn't England wasn't in the, no. this situation. Hunter didn't get his. <laughs> Kyle? I didn't even try. Yeah. Me neither. Like, I don't have money is... to buy a PS5 yet. See, neither Let's do I, but you know what? I do it for you guys, so make sure you hit that subscribe <laughs> button. Because this is Hot Gamers Only, where every week on Mondays at 5pm UK time, 12pm Eastern, we come to you to talk to about everything that we love in the world of games. You can find us on podcast services everywhere and on YouTube. Go to bit.ly slash the giggers. That's bit.ly slash the giggers to find our YouTube channel because we don't have a custom URL where you can get the video versions of these podcasts where you can look straight at our faces as we talk about all the hot topics in gaming. Otherwise, we're on iTunes, we're on Apple, uh, well, I, Apple Podcasts, I guess now, uh, Spotify, Google Play, we're everywhere, so you can find us there if you just want to listen to our voices and don't want to look at our ugly mugs. That's pretty cool too. Um, Are we back on Google Play? We're always been on Google We've Play. It was Google Play. it was yeah. SoundCloud, and we're still not on SoundCloud, and we still, oh, on SoundCloud right. and we still won't be because I'm not going on SoundCloud again until you guys want to listen there because it costs us way more money than everything else. So there, <laughs> there you go. Uh, other bits of housekeeping. We did react to the PS5 event last week, so if you want to see our initial live reactions as they happened, you can go on over to the YouTube channel and check those out. Um, and then other than that, I don't think there's anything really to come in the housekeeping. Um, nothing really special this week. We probably Tell Me Why Review probably be up. Not going to lie, I've been ill as hell this week, and we were very busy, so I pushed it. And yeah, it's getting to a busy point. If it's not this week, it's never, because Crash is out the week after, so it needs to be out this week probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, we're working on it. We're working on it. We'll have some new content soon. Uh, Cal, you wanted to say something before we started with the podcast proper, so I'll hand it over to you. I sure did. So this is our twenty seventh episode. Yeah, we've been doing this for roughly roughly twenty seven weeks. Huh? We just right. passed fifty subscribers, mm -hmm. or we just hit fifty subs pretty recently. Mm -hmm. And but we, I'd like the show to keep getting bigger. You know, no, nah, I want it to get smaller. To be honest, to we've been doing a lot of work. we've been doing a lot of work, and yeah. I want to, I want this place to keep growing. Yeah. So, this is my this is my little incentive to all of you oh, to maybe get you to want to share the podcast around, get some more people to subscribe, stuff like that. So, oh, here's my proposal. Yeah. If by the end of the year, yeah. this channel reaches 100 subscribers, oh boy, I will do mm -hmm. a full. 120 star playthrough of super mario 64 on my live stream twitch.tv slash k davis oh, baby oh and we anyone this man suffer anyone who has listened to a, any of these episodes knows i super dislike super mario 64 i think it's one of the worst platformers ever made i yeah, think same. it plays like ass yeah, same. and that is the kind of suffering that i will do 
for you guys. The sooner we get to 100 subscribers, the sooner I will do this live stream. Nah, do you know what? Fuck it. I'll join you. I hate Mario 64 as well. There you go. Two of uh, Fuck so, it. I won't even. I'll just. I, I'll just do it. Fuck it. I don't I got care. a question right, here, yeah, Kyle. Yeah, fuck it. Which oh. version is this going to be? Is it going to be the Switch version? No, I have it already bought on my Wii U. There we go. Uh, okay. We play the Wii U on version. Wii U Virtual Console. Oh, I don't own the, the game. Versions. I don't own the game. <laughs> I won't stream it, but I'll do it as well. <laughs> oh, that's well. There's the fun of that, Ethan. Yeah. Well, I don't want to take your funder from the stream. I don't want to <laughs> steal the funder. Hey, maybe I know the Wii U version. Hey, just I'll promise Kyle. I'll really let good. Kyle can definitely do it. I'll I'll see if I have the money at the time because it's it'll be during PS5 season where I'll be broke as hell and I don't own a copy of Super Mario 64. <laughs> So I might but have to yes. do that dirty word, the dirty E word. A hundred subscribers by December thirty first of this year, <laughs> and I will live stream Super Mario sixty four one hundred percent. That sounds like a challenge. So if you can head to bit.ly slash the giggers if you are on podcast services and here's with the sub, we'd really appreciate it. Um, yeah, we we're trying our hardest to grow. It's kind of hard to build up in a podcast audience initially. We're really proud of the support that you guys have been giving us over the past. 27 episodes it's been crazy um how much support we have had but we'd love for this to keep going for us to keep being able to do what we do on a consistent basis because it's very expensive to do it Mm -hmm. especially me and hunter who have put in (laughs) quite a lot of fucking money into this podcast with the amount of games that we bought (laughs) so to be fair i would have been buying these anyway I'd say same, but you know, I don't know if I would have bought Last of Us and all that, uh, even though I did love them for full price. But yeah, we we do love what we're doing. So yeah, any support would be greatly appreciated. We do want to do more on this channel as well, but hey, it's hard. We're trying. It's this is basically our hobby at the end of the day. So we're not oh, we're not true. spending our full times on it, and we'd really appreciate any support. So yeah. Share with your friends, share with your brothers, sisters, mum, dads, doesn't matter who subscribed, just get them to subscribe so that we can keep growing and keep doing the show and keep making uh, what we do. With that out of the They don't even have way, to watch, just subscribe. Hey, <laughs> watching would be great too. Watching would be great too. If you could all, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's appreciated. If you, could but... all, yeah, if you could all watch every episode and not just the reactions, that'd be great. That'd be great. You know? <laughs> yeah. Can't watch our real content and not the, the anti-content. I swear the reactions get so many views. They so. do, and we appreciate it. Why are you it. still watching the first PlayStation views. 5 reaction that's months old at this point? Hey, I mean, to be fair, Why? it is super old, but at the same time, the watch time is a lot lower on those than they are on the podcast, so I do really appreciate the high watch time on these mm-hmm. videos. We really do appreciate oh, everyone yeah. going out that's their way nice. yep. to listen to a lot of the podcast, not just the first five minutes. You guys do tend to listen to quite a bit of it so we do really appreciate it with that out of the way let's start with ps5 um the ps5 reveal event happened this week guys well ps the ps5 price reveal event happened this week yeah uh, yeah with a couple new games couple well. new uh, couple is yeah that's <laughs> that's quite a few um and quite a few release dates quite a few announcements so i thought we'd start with what are our initial without we're going to go into each specific game so don't you worry all you five nights of freddy's fans i'm sure you're really going to love that section um <laughs> Hell, you bad i forgot fans. that happened yeah but um we're going to go through it individually but i'm going to throw it to i'll throw it to you gary first because you're because uh, you're the irregular person on this podcast uh, at the moment so um i'll okay. ask you this uh, what were your initial impressions of the ps5 Event um overall. so the initial ps5 uh sort of broadcast i i guess i'm not going to say reveal because we already you know, ex- ex- i've just been calling it a ex- september ex- event september state of play yeah, whatever you want to call it yeah. i guess would be the correct terming for it mm-hmm. overall i felt it like it was solid but then like p- after the broadcast is when stuff started getting really complicated. When Jeff Keighley started announcing stuff instead of uh, the PlayStation themselves. Yeah. Dude, when Jeff Keighley came out with all the information, he's like, that pre-orders was... alive tomorrow. And we're like, wait, what? Why is Jeff telling us and not PlayStation? Yeah, that was just really <laughs> weird. And strange. like them also saying, oh yeah, um, Miles Morales is coming to PS4. I was like, wait, what? I thought I mean, this was a PS5 exclusive. We'll, like, we'll, get, we'll get into that, but... Yeah. I'm all for fair play. I, I I said it when Xbox announced has been announcing that they're exclusives. I've said it's for generate for like for making a new system. It's unappealing, but it's also I feel like it's the best way to do it just because everyone gets to keep up. Yeah. Um, well, they did also mention like if you do get Miles Morales for PS4, you'll get a the free upgrade, upgrade to PS5. Which, we'll mention uh, that. We'll mention all the yeah. PS4, PS5 shenanigans in a second. Uh, let uh, Hunter, what were your initial impressions of the entire event? as a whole i liked it i saw quite a few things that were new and interesting to me or something where demon souls 
for example, it's one of those ones mm-hmm. where I'm like, ah, oh, I'm feeling like I may try this now. Yeah, it was. It looked really appealing to me until I saw the price tag in the UK, yeah. and then I laughed. Um, <laughs> well, again, another thing we'll get into. A little hint. Yeah, it's we'll as if we set it up. It was as if I was like, if you can say the the PS4 games, uh, Gary, and then Hunter, if you can mention the prices, and there you go. But no, uh, Cal, what did you think? I thought the whole thing was really good. I really enjoyed seeing all the new games they announced, and as along with the the stuff we already did know about. And I especially loved getting to see that. Uh, DMC five getting a special edition on digit as a digital download on launch. Yeah, dude. Like, it, would, it wouldn't be a Japanese game without a uh, enhanced edition, dude. It wouldn't be. Honestly, yeah. yeah but now play as virtual mode. Hey, <laughs> the classic. I mean, I haven't played DMC five either, and if I'm gonna play it, I'll play that version now. So it's Same. appealing to me. Yeah. But no, I thought it was a really solid event. I feel like in terms of playstation's actual like marketing afterwards and spreading out all this information was absolutely fucking tragic and it was a, sh- a, a right <laughs> shit show everyone was panicking three hours later we were like free orders are tomorrow oh god i've got i remember saying to you guys like i've got to stay up all day to now figure out what time the pre-orders go live and then they just go live two hours after the event and i'm like well great here we go they literally every in the uk they went up at half 11 at night so literally most people slept through and woke up and the ps5 was gone and it was that was it. it was done. So yeah. I was I was lucky being in Somnia yeah. for that day. But yeah, no, I think in terms of the actual content, I feel that like there was a bit of a there was a bit of a lull at one point. But other than that, I feel like it was really solid. And some of the stuff mm-hmm. that they announced, like the PS Plus collection, which we'll get into, are so I have the full good list here as well. that we'll um, we'll have to talk about. It. Let's start. So yeah. those are they just did a really good job showing games, which was the big thing. They do what Sony's been. I feel like yeah. developers forget. They sometimes. do what Sony's been doing for like five years now and just show games. Yeah, for, be- for really better good. or worse, they let the games do the talking. And you'll have like a couple of people show up and go, "Hey." here's the cold war alpha but other than that you'll have most of the time they keep it to just having the game show which i think it works wonders for them when it goes well sometimes you yeah. get really shit years where it's absolutely dull but you know i feel like in terms of i mean they were just showing content, big game after big game yeah so um yeah. let's talk about it let's start off with the big game at the start which I very much called from literally seeing the tattoo, which I'm very proud of myself for that one. I saw someone <laughs> had a tattoo on their face, and I, if you watch our reaction, you just saw me scream. I said, it's Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> and hey, I was right. So there you go. <laughs> Final Fantasy 16 was announced as a console exclusive uh, for PlayStation 5. It's available on PC for all you nerds that like keyboard and mouse. You go and have fun. Um, but if you have an Xbox, it didn't say console timed exclusive, like 7 Remake. This seems to be you need you need a ps5 to play it on console so there you go oh. i saw different things about that um yeah as you said ps5 console exclusive mm-hmm. from what i heard it was like completely exclusive for six months that will mo- be a pc release oh completely and then... exclusive and then to pc it's just the fact that they say console exclusive because they, they usually the thing is um for example with Final Fantasy VII Remake, they announced that it was a launch, it was a console launch exclusive, which meant that it was like, it's like, Final, it was like, it's it's launching on this console exclusively for 12 months and then everywhere else is coming afterwards. And this time they just said it was, yeah, like console exclusive. They didn't say launch, they just said console exclusive or yeah. available on PC, which to me screams that it's not coming to three to Xbox One well, and Series X. We'll see what, where it actually ends up. But it was interesting. I anyway. could see them not wanting to develop for that because I've heard from a couple Microsoft developers. I think it was Call of Duty. Um, the Call of Duty developers said that developing for the Series S is actually really difficult and might hold yeah. the generation back. Well, not just that. I feel like um, the only Final Fantasy game that wasn't just an old port that Xbox got was the, this lovely little gem here that Hunter really loved. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, and just to, make, and just to make you happy, Hunter, I'm not even going to throw it. I'm going to respectfully put it back on my shelf. <laughs> of all the and games I would have loved to see you throw, uh, that would be oh, worth no, like a thousand. Get us to 100 subscribers. Throws. Get us 200 subscribers and I'll throw it. I'll do it myself. <laughs> he'll, throw, he'll throw FF15 for 100 right. subscribers on YouTube. Right. <laughs> Get out of that, that was aggressive. Whoa. I did not expect that. 
I've become I've become a I've become a bad representation, dude. I have rubbed off on you too much. Uh, um, I unfortunately won't do that with Mario sixty four. It's built into the console. Ah, oh, truly <laughs> trash console. Truly Although tragic. it's just the Wii U, so I mean, it's cares? the Wii U for the console. Right, but anyway, back on track. We talked about too much about the fucking white text at the end of the trailer. What did everyone think of the initial reveal of Final Fantasy sixteen? Um, what did you think on the trailer? I'll, I'll go to uh, Hunter, our resident Final yeah. Fantasy fan. Go on, Hunter. What did well, you yeah, think? I'm a Final Fantasy fan, too. Yes, but here Shut we go. My yes. turn. <laughs> <laughs> he's, in, um, he's in one, Gary. I'll so anyway, well. you see... This looked really cool as far as the mm. world being set back to something that's actually interesting. Actual fantasy, back to fantasy we go. Yeah. yeah. Medieval fantasy is like something that they've not actually touched since like nine. Ten was a little anachronistic. Thirteen was futury. Twelve was something. Twelve was more that steampunky. Was, yeah. So going back to like a straight up medieval fantasy setting is cool. The uh, lore wise, there's a lot of interesting bits and pieces there. Uh, the little bit of combat that they showed, it seemed like it was an extension of everything that they've learned from their experimentation with the series from the past decade. I thought it was so weird. I thought, yeah, I thought it was really weird. Obviously, we didn't get to see any UI or anything like that. But yeah. I thought with the two, basically, Final Fantasy is now two franchises. You have the mainline franchise, and now you have the seven remake franchise that are going to run in parallel for a while right for at least like the next yeah. five years five six years we're gonna have these two franchises Generously. in parallel yeah. yeah that's me being generous i'm because i'm assuming there's another two parts to final fantasy 7 remake knowing the more there's probably five and we're going to be playing this until we're 40 but <laughs> i thought was milking the yeah. seven i thought money. because i thought because seven r was very it was like a linear kind of in very much a hack and slash in a load of ways right less so of yeah. a numbers rpg and a lot more of a hack and slash and what i thought was interesting was other than the movement system the combat system being a lot it looked a lot floatier and when i say that it felt like it doesn't feel it feels lighter like light is probably the term you seem to be moving yeah, about it looked like there was more. a guy yeah. uh, in the air and he was comboing him like but other than it being lighter i'm surprised how hack and slashy it actually looked i was like this i, I this looks more similar this looks more similar to final fantasy 7 remake than i thought it would and i was like oh i thought that i thought that was pretty interesting that's just one thing i thought yeah it looks like it has the potential to be interesting. which if it, if it is like remake like, then that's great because that combat system yeah. i fucking adored like I, this that remake is still if we're not counting royal is still my game of the year so far like i loved remake to yeah. death it's still my favorite game so if if it is like that it'll be great uh kyle what did you think I'll let you um, um, quick kind of, kind of in the same vein as Hunter, I'm really excited to see Final Fantasy actually go back to medieval yeah. Final Fan medieval fantasy. Uh, like the world of thirteen and fifteen just kind of put me off wanting to play them, just because the worlds didn't look that interesting at the forefront. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I'm a big fan of nine. I'm a big fan of tactics. Like I will gladly take another medieval style Final Fantasy. And the game itself looks fucking gorgeous. Only game to be running on PC instead of actually on native hardware, which is Correct. something that I think is expected from Square, because I've heard a load of different things. Like you said earlier, Gary, when people have said you've been hearing a lot of different things, some people have been saying that this game's well off, and that's why it's on P uh, PC. Uh, I saw Jason Schreier say that this game's been, been, it's been in development for six years, and you're going to see it sooner than you think you're going to see it. Um, so mm. we're hearing a load of different mixed messages from everybody so i think it's going to be interesting but it does look really good i thought it was weird i thought the one the world looked really great the one thing to me that looked weird and i don't know if you guys noticed was the character models the characters kind of looked a bit like i, I we're spoiled with remake right we're spoiled with remake like right? i think all of the, <laughs> the art team all, character models were all really the artwork cool. yeah. yeah all the art team just basically worked on just the fucking character models you have those bullshit awful door like um, yeah, the skyboxes you've seen and them, and the skyboxes are awful in remake right but um character yeah. models in remake are some of the best character models i've ever seen like they're up there with naughty dog they're up there with naughty dog's character models they're fucking brilliant and they just the kind of they look like character models. seven re yeah seven remakes here yeah. then 16 is like here it's not bad but there's just you just with how much effort they put into seven remake i'm like oh i can tell that these models at least where they are now aren't where remake was yeah i almost feel like they had to put more effort into seven remakes models just to give people the 
kind of like oh yeah this is how i remember seeing these things true, true. this is how yeah. i envisioned these people would look it won't yeah. be that hard I, to I was get gonna bring out to yeah, something about look. that go for it Gary. um this is gonna sound strange but the models that they showed there looked current gen not next gen if well, that makes sense i i agree but we're gonna have this is like one of those um, discussions which i think a load of people have been having but everyone's everyone's been saying right when you look at these next gen games you're like oh the foliage oh the draw distance all oh, the worlds look great but the character models kind of seem to have like hit kind of they're kind of plateauing on how good character models are kind of getting now like in sure. forbidden west i loved that first trailer for forbidden west i think the environment looks all awesome i love horizon to death it's one of my five favorite games on ps4 by far i fucking love that video game but and you can just tell even the leap from the open world there to where it was in 2017 fucking incredible but aloy's model to me looks the exact same like i didn't like yeah, i can see like little tweaks the but the models me. just kind of look the same i feel like we've hit a plateau where everyone just kind of is starting to get we're trying to we, character models aren't getting very much further i don't think at this rate yeah. until there's another mm-hmm. breakthrough in something i feel like this is i mean peak. that could just be the with the technology that we've gotten now, we've got the ray tracing stuff coming, which is like supposed to be like very realistic light. It's all animation. Yeah, it's, it's all environmental, right? It's all environmental. Yeah. But yeah. what is there to develop next? Like we we have. Very, I feel like very, that's. I feel very... like that's what it is. I feel like yeah. it's building the worlds. So that's the that's PS Five is and Xbox Series X is building worlds that look photorealistic. And have high density, but don't sh- the, the but have quicker load times and better draw yeah. distance. I feel and higher frame rates. I think that's what Xbox, that what Microsoft, and Sony is going for. I think that's what you're going to see. I I don't like. If, but at the same time, you've got to think, right? I remember back when PS4 started, and you if you look at those early PS4 games, like if you go and look at Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, if you go and look at Knack, or if you go and look at Infamous Second Son, right? We used to think, and we used to look at those, and we used to go, oh, they look so next-gen compared to them. And then you go and look at the PS3 versions, and they're pretty actually similar. Like, you go look at the yeah, PS3 yeah. and PS4 versions of Black Flag, they look the, basically the same. It's just the water's nicer, and it's in 1080. <laughs> but when you look at those early games, like, I remember thinking, Infamous Second Son already looks gorgeous. How the fuck are we going to get, like, how are we going to, what, like... I don't see how games are going to look better. And now you compare it to The Last of Us Part 2 and Go- Ghost of Tsushima and God of War and you look back at Infamous Second Son and you go, wow, it looks a bit shit now, doesn't it? Like, it, it looks good still, but compared to it, it's like, oh. So I think, yeah. like, early gen, this is... I feel like yeah, environment early steps in early the generation, generation uh, are a lot closer to, like, the end steps of the previous generation. Yeah. I and think since it, FF16 yeah, is coming out as... Well, early mid gen, you hope a lot sooner yeah. than we expect. I'm guessing 2022. That's my guess. I'm guessing late 2021. I'm gonna go for it. Ball and I, move. I honestly think like we might be getting 16. Will we? Will we? Year. Will we see 16 first or remake part two? That's the real question. <laughs> Which one do we see first? You think we see 16 Probably. first? Remake 16. part two is not happening for another 10 years. I don't know, I mean, man. I don't... I don't know. They've already started motion cap on it. Which to me says that they're in at least a state where they're like, we know what we're doing if we start in motion capture. So I'm... I would say, I would expect part two in 2022. That's a good think... shout. What regular re- remake part two 2022 16 2021? That's yes. your guess. I, I don't think I'd they're going to be releasing both at the same time. That is the dumbest thing that they could do. That would be silly. But if they could get into a nice rhythm with it, that'd well, be I think cool. it. Would, I think it would make sense because. Namora's already announced that 2022 is the next big Kingdom Hearts year because that's the 20th yeah, anniversary. Really so that. think about this. 16 fall 2021, New Kingdom Hearts, spring 2022, and then remake in the following fall would make sense on a release pack. Yeah. So there you go. 22 is the year of Nomura. Oh boy. Everyone run. <laughs> run. He's gotten too powerful. Everyone but run. Yeah, like... Yeah. Uh, I think that's sort of what we might be seeing from Square with Final Fantasy 16 and uh, 7 Part but 2. Yeah. It does look gorgeous though. One thing I do want to say, and one thing that's made me really optimistic about Final Fantasy 16, I don't know his name, and I'm not even going to look it up because I'll just butcher it anyway, but 
the the producer on Final Fantasy 16 is the director and producer of Final Fantasy 14 around Reborn. He's the guy that came in and fixed oh, that nice. fucker. And oh yeah, he's the guy that <laughs> and if anyone can say Final Good Fantasy job. from the, if anyone can say Final Fantasy, it's him. Because yeah, I've heard nothing but love about Final Fantasy fourteen since A Realm Reborn came out. Every time I any anytime I see anything positive about Final Fantasy and it's not about remake, it's about the MMO. It's about fourteen. I constantly mm. see like Final Fantasy fourteen is the best MMO you yeah. can currently play. And all like the time. this guy's dedicated as shit and he knows what he's doing. So if I trust anyone and I'd recommend if a bit of homework for you guys. If you haven't seen No Clips documentary on Final Fantasy XIV, uh, Danny O'Dwyer from No Clip did a three-part documentary about how they fixed that game, and he's and the producers in it, and it's he, as someone that hasn't even played the fucking game and has only played remake as far in terms of Final Fantasy. It's <laughs> so interesting, and I really highly recommend you go and watch it because it gives you a real insight out into how they fixed that game in such a short period of time. Um, yeah, can I bring another point up with Final Fantasy sixteen? One more, and then we'll um, move on because we wait. Got a lot this is <laughs> strange, but you know when they did the camera shot on the helmet of that, uh, like, of the soldier. I'm gonna say yes, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> like, on your uh, that that helmet felt very judge like for like the Evil East universe of Final Fantasy. I'm talking about like the judges from Twelve. <laughs> yeah, the judges from Twelve mm. are cool. But yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I, you can see a lot of crossover. You can you can see a lot of crossover between this game and fourteen. Actually, a lot of people thought that it was a fourteen expansion at first, and I was like, "That's good." <laughs> no, a fourteen expansion wouldn't look that good. No MMO yeah. is graphically like mind blowing because of dude. I just love seeing that, the chocobo that with armor in the background. On. It's great, dude. I, oh I, yeah, it, armor chocobo really looks cute. Really As someone that's not been interested in Final Fantasy ever, other than remake, just because I wanted to get on the hype, seeing that. I'm really interested in seeing Final Fantasy 16, and I might actually try it myself. Like in terms of yeah, look, 16 oh, looks yes. great, and it looks original. And I it looks saw cool. a couple people talk about like like the actual final point here. Yo. I saw a couple people talk about that the combat system. They got the Devil May Cry guy on. Yeah, they well, did. Like, I heard a rumor about that a while ago. Yeah. Yeah, and so if, if they did that, then this combat I will. <laughs> if, if it's going to be a bit <laughs> even a more actiony. Yeah, it's like, it's like be seven really remakes, but more actiony. That would be excellent. I feel like yeah, with him on as a gameplay lead, and then you have the Final Fantasy fourteen producer, come, Realm Reborn producer coming in. I think that this is. I I don't want to say it because then in two years time someone's going to come in and say Ethan said it was a surefire hit and it's a pile of shit and I'm like, oh, <laughs> I feel like it's going to gonna be... be really hard to screw this up. So don't screw it up, Square, please. <laughs> yeah, please don't. Yeah. But no, so there you go. Final Fantasy 16. We're going to move on because, my God, if we talk about that this long for everything else, we will not get through this entire fucking conference. And we've got... I mean, I don't think there was anything as big as FF16. Not really. Uh, there's, um, a couple, there's a couple. Yeah, there's a couple. Uh, let's talk about uh, that Spider-Man Miles Morales gameplay. And you mentioned they've announced that now that it is coming um, it is coming to PS4 as well as PS5. We should say we should say that Sackboy's fucking huge adventure is also coming to PlayStation Four for all those people that want to pay sixty fucking pounds for a Sackboy game. There you go, kids. Go ahead. <laughs> Isn't it seventy? Pardon, no, it's six. Luckily, it's, it's cheaper. It's cheaper. Because it's cheaper, Gary, because it's a it's a kids game. It's only sixty pounds. Yeah. So if any of you, you have like pent up aggression to Sackboy or something, no, it's just because it's it costs more than Crash Four. So if any of you, if I see any of you on my timeline playing that, <laughs> and playing Crash Four, I'm killing you. But Isn't that like basically the three D world clone? Yeah, which I thought looks great, but now that I know how much it is, I'm like, that looks great to play when it's ten dollars a year. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. I, I can't. Like, so yeah, Spider Man's what? Well, no, Spider Man is coming to PS4, and so is Horizon. And Sony has have also stated that Demon Souls and Ratchet and Clank are PS5 exclusives. They're not coming to PS4. Um, okay. And to that, before we let's just talk about the actual games coming to PS4. Is anyone actually surprised about this? They is anyone surprised about this? Other than Horizon, uh, I'm surprised about Horizon. Still, what? Go on. Hunt. I'm. I'm still not really that shocked surprised about Horizon being about the PS4 Spider-Man game. and Horizon. 
I'm not surprised like, about. Uh, I'm not surprised about Spider Man. I'm a little bit surprised about Horizon, but from everything, as you know, guys, I'm an industry insider and I know everything and I get everything right. Remember, guys, I predicted two months ago the exact prices of the PS5, so you should be really hitting that subscribe button. You also predicted that we'd know them by then. Yeah, but at least <laughs> I knew the right numbers. I wasn't leading you on. I didn't. I got the numbers bang on. But anyway, the I price was the that. easy part. Yeah, I'd the agree. price was predicted. I digress. Was it? <laughs> Very yeah. predictable. People thought that it was going to be 450, 350, 600, 500. I digress. No, I digress. Th- they're silly if they thought it was going to, if they were going to I digress. Microsoft. I digress. Anyway, moving on. I'm not surprised about Spider Man or Horizon because yeah. from everything that I've heard, both of these things started as PS4 games. I've, yeah. I, I heard that by the Spider Man was, from what I've been told, Horizon was a PS4 game for a long time. And then the, the PS5 was coming and like, okay, we're moving this. Mm-hmm. So I'm not surprised. I feel like those three are the only three that are coming. I don't think Ratchet is not happening. I'm telling you that right now. You can hold me <laughs> to this one. Prove me wrong, kid. Yeah. The thing with Ratchet, Ratchet is that it probably work. needs the SSD yeah, speeds yeah. to We'd function see it. as it intended. It, it won't work. That game won't work. Um and Deep with Spider Man and the uh, yeah. Horizon, like the you might get some pretty bad loading times because oh, we you know will. how you bad loading has been this generation. Horizon one but, load times were awful, so Horizon two is as good. But be. they'll they may have improved the loads a little bit, like optimized how games are loaded and I such. Mean, but yeah, they're going to be playable with those loading times. Something like Ratchet, as I said, like it's not going to work without that uh, loading speed that it will require. But no, anyone that's surprised obviously hasn't really been paying attention like i feel like this was i feel like this was gonna happen they never i know i noticed how they very specifically never mentioned ever that spider-man was a ps5 exclusive they had, they had been saying that all these other games were ps5 exclusives but they never specifically said they only said captured on ps5 for spider-man that entire time so i was like oh that one makes sense uh, yeah makes sense. they probably wanted to show the game off in the best quality i mean they still are aren't they done. Yeah. It still is made for PS5, and that, so and that's why I'm going to play it. But hey, mm-hmm. I feel like anyone that sees this as a bad thing is stupid. But in terms, let's move on. In yeah. terms of the actual gameplay, what did you guys think from the gameplay that we saw? Hunter, I know you played the original. What did you think? I did. It looked like a really cool set piece, the kind of thing that you know, back before the original Spider-Man for uh, PS4 released, mm-hmm. it looked like the kind of thing that you'd see in a trailer and be like, "Oh, that's a nice cutscene." Not thinking you'd be playing it. Yeah. <laughs> as far as like all the that, that demo, that original twenty eighteen, that that original demo for Spider Man PS4, the one with the crane, um, where it was the big set piece where the crane starts falling and then Spider Man starts running off it and he just leaps off it at the end and it just goes straight into gameplay. I always remember that moment yeah. just giving me chills because I was like, "Holy shit, you're actually playing it." It's not like yeah, it's so good. And they did it again. And they did it again. Yeah. yeah. Transition from thing to swing was great the thing to swing transitions are great dude. Yeah. i love them <laughs> they're the best part the, of uh, my games and then the little bit of the combat that they showed miles's tool set looks cool the invisibility mm. mid combat is interesting because not a lot of games have done that mm. one thing i will yeah. say which is what i um picked up on out of anything was how fucking good the characters look like holy shit like people were pointing it out on twitter just looking at miles's hair and just stuff like that and just seeing how much effort they fucking put into this like it's incredible like it's yeah, yeah. is starting to be like honestly like my favorite developer from sony studios at this point just because of how much effort they're putting into their games yeah the amount of effort as we said the amount of effort they're putting into those character details is really really nuts like we have um physical base rendering on a lot of things in that spider-man or pbr if you're into the tech stuff no we're not where it's like you got like material like you can sort of see sort of materials like metals will reflect light proper like a lot better um uh nylon stuff you like i guess that would be miles's outfit would be like a nylon sort of thing Mm -hmm. like the material uh stuff there is really really nuts and he, i just like i loved even like even kyle no me me and kyle noted straight away the fact that you could just hear 
the soundtrack and how it changed from this orchestral, oh, yeah. this orchestral soundtrack from the original Spider Man to basically Spider Verse, where it was still had those motifs, <laughs> but you could just hear the the music in the background was just so miles. It was like crazy. Mm-hmm. But no, cause yeah. I, you're yeah. a massive fan of Miles, Kyle. What did you think in the end? Is this a game that you're actually interested in? Yeah, it it is. So I wasn't interested in really. I never really paid attention to the Spider-Man PS4 game because yeah. I think Spider-Man is kind of boring as like mm-hmm. a character to play as. Yeah. It's just like web slinging and then what? But Miles, like he <laughs> takes the web swinging toolkit and expands it. Like he can turn invisible. He has electricity built into him. He like. He just looks so much more fun and more versatile than Spider regular Spider Man could be. I think but, the one yeah. thing that Insomniac's nailed is their little Spider Verse that they've made. Mm. Like they didn't, they very, they didn't. The only little teaser of Miles before the actual game came out that was at the end of a teaser trailer. Someone said Miles, and he turned around. And they was like, "Oh shit, Miles is in this as well." But like Miles <laughs> is like, in Sp- Miles is one of my favorite characters in the original Spider Man game from 2018. Like they did such a good job with incorporating him. He's He's boring as how to play as because you just plays him as fucking regular yeah. Miles. Yeah. But in terms of setting his story up, they did such a good job that I'm yeah, really looking forward nice. to it. Mm-hmm. And just having a universe where two Spider Man are in it is like it's so weird that no one's really done this that much before. Like having Peter and Miles still like, coexist in the same universe without either of them dying and then both being Spider Man is such a cool idea that I can't wait to see how this happens this keeps going in miles and then in the inevitable spider-man 2 that we will definitely see um spider-man's also getting a remaster for those of you that care it comes with the ultimate edition of miles morales um and it's basically how much extra is that uh 20 dollars i believe i believe miles is 50 and then regular 70 dollars which is the new full price for console games um for the ultimate which includes the remaster include it it's basically the miles morales um improvements but in the graphical yeah, engine yeah they and all the models are switched out they even they very much specified the next gen peter parker model is in the remaster of spider-man ps4 so there you go so okay. they're using whatever they've learned for spider-man 2 so there you go that's Spy- spider-man let's talk uh very quickly there's not much uh what did everyone think of the harry potter rpg uh, hogwarts legacy that was then the next thing did anyone have any? <laughs> you initially called it Hogwarts Legends. I did at least three times before Sam finally got it into my yeah, mind. Yep. Legacy. <laughs> but yeah, um, I thought it looked great, but I'm not graphically. Honest. Yeah, it looks it great. Looks amazing. Um, I'm surprised. I'm interested what elements it incorporates into the game. Say, when you do your character creation. Do you pick a house at the start for like a spec? Like for like a this is the point where everyone goes, "Ooh, I wonder." But from the leak, we know the answer is yes. <laughs> I, I, I have not looked at the leak, and the answer is yes. Leak, you create so. your character, you choose your house, and you live in Hogwarts. You play as yourself. I'm probably not going to buy it uh, for reasons. ethical reasons. That's my problem. Is e- I, yeah, I, ethical. I, I love I love the world of Harry Potter, and I. I'm sure, and you can just tell, I said this on Twitter, that the developers have put their heart and soul into this. You can tell that this is really a passion project, and it's a shame that J.K. Rowling's gone and fucked everything to do with Harry Potter to the point where I just don't want anything to do with it. At least until something's done about her fucking views and opinions, to be honest. (laughs) One thing I will say is... It sucks to be Avalanche right now. If I do get this game, or like, because it is coming to PC, Mm. like, that is a thing that they've confirmed... Um, unfortunately, on PC, I can't get it at a used price, which kind of and yeah, people sucks. people. I feel like there's a very interesting thing that's been going on because everyone I've seen a load of people on Twitter trying to jump this ethical like it's trying to balance on this ethical tightrope of how can I play this Harry Potter game without saying that yeah. I agree with her? And I'm like, <laughs> everyone wants day, that second hand copy. At the end of the day, yeah, the but they, as a Harry Potter fan, yeah, and at the end of the day, Rowling it, fan. It, it, it just it, it honestly depends yeah. you do like you do you you do what you think is right i i couldn't play that game in all honesty with just knowing that jk's making money from it i just couldn't yeah. even if i yeah. bought it used someone else had to have bought it new anyway so it doesn't matter <laughs> right so it's like i'm just one of those it's just one of those things Intainted. where yeah it looks good but just to me some people are able to separate 
the work from the author. Mm -hmm. And the thing, the one thing that I'll say, and someone said it on Twitter, is it's fair enough to do that with people who are already dead and people who had terrible opinions and are long gone, right? It's a lot easier to, but this person's alive and everything that they're saying is impacting people right now. Yeah. And another thing is people are trying to separate the source material, which is Harry Potter, from J.K. Rowling. I don't know another franchise where the author and the source material are so interwoven that it's this fucking clear. J.K. Rowling is Harry Potter. Whether you like yeah. it or not, J.K. is Harry Potter. So if you're one of those people that are like, oh, I'm just going to separate. I'm like, yeah, fair enough. If you can do that, fair enough. But Harry Potter is J.K. Rowling. It just it's, is. Like, they're so intertwined, it is almost impossible that you can't separate, separate them. Yeah. But you hey, if that's, what, if that's what keeps you going and makes you feel alright, then go for it. I'm personally going to skip out on it, unless we are somehow big enough when that game comes out to get a review copy, then I will steal it. <laughs> shit all over it now <laughs> but you know he's and, gonna uh, get this real strong harry potter itch when the game comes out and he's gonna like mask up and go raid a truck that's delivering <laughs> he's gonna get one of, he's gonna get like one of those like gryffindor cloaks or something or whatever house he belongs to i guess i do have a gryffindor i i do this is really sad yes i, I am a gryffindor thank you yes i do <laughs> Oh, I just threw out a random house. I didn't think you were actually a Gryffindor. Yeah, I'm actually a Gryffindor. It makes me sad because that's probably the one she likes the most, so it makes me feel even worse. Uh, well, moving on. The main characters in there. Yeah, next up uh, was <laughs> Black Ops Cold War, Bravo 6, whatever the fuck. Oh, Twitter is. check time. Twitter check time. Yeah, time to check Twitter for me. Yeah. One thing <laughs> I will say. I love that part of the trailer. The trailer was fine. I'm kind of looking forward to this game because I'm a sucker for Cold War um, in terms of I love the original Black Ops. Uh, but I have played the Alpha. This is a game that I can talk about. Um, I played the Alpha. The only one. In Call of Duty. And um, <laughs> the one thing I will say is, the only thing that I really have to say is, for a game that they've only shown gameplay of on PC and PS5, I will say that it runs extremely well on, P on base PS4. So fair play to them because I was expecting the PS4 version to run like ass, and it doesn't. It, look, it runs really well. So fair play to them. But other than that, it's Call of Duty. I don't know what you expect. I didn't play it and go, oh, Revelation. It's something completely <laughs> different. No, it's Call of Duty. And if you like Call of Duty, you'll like this one. And I'm more interested in the campaign anyway, to be honest. So, yeah, I don't really... Yeah, have... at least that is like espionage and spy stuff, hopefully. Oh, yeah, it's the campaign and zombies that I'm interested in. We still haven't seen anything to do with zombies, so I'm really scared. Because the only little things we have seen scare me because it looks really fucking weird and doesn't look like something that I want. But hey, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But no, Cold War is very interesting. I can't wait to see more. I can't wait to play it and give this a great review on the gigas because I fucking know no one else is going to touch it with a 10-foot pole, so I have to do it anyway. So it's all good. Never um, even played a Call of Duty in my life. It's, it's last Call of Duty I played. You was, hold on uh, to that, Kyle. I Black will, Ops Hunter. Two. Yeah. And now we're on Black Ops Five. Wow, what a riot! They never get a start. Hooray! But hey, at least they're going back to the good Black Ops. At least, at least they're going back to the Cold War. Um, hopefully. hopefully, hopefully. All I'll say is that that one it's campaign, that one campaign trait, the reveal trailer for Cold War. I haven't given a shit about Call of Duty for a, a long while. I just kept picking it up because I'm a zombies fan, right? For those of you that don't know, I really you play like it for the zombies. zombies. Yeah, I genuinely do. I genuinely bought the game and the fucking season pass every year and didn't touch the fucking multiplayer because I needed it for zombies because it was stupid. Um, but as someone that hasn't cared about Call of Duty or campaigns for like seven years, that one I was actually I'm actually really excited about. It's a really good trailer, even though <laughs> even though it's really weird seeing Ronald Reagan in there. You know, we're just gonna ignore that. But you know. I can't believe they got him to be in their video. It's incredible. <laughs> Very cool. But that's all I've got to say about Call of Duty. It's Call of Duty. I've played it. I'm still gonna buy it when it comes out. And by buy it, I mean I'm probably gonna get it for my birthday because it's basically the same. It's basically right around there. And I'm not paying for video games, Mom. You can't make me. Right, anyway, <laughs> moving on. RE8 was the next game. I'm just going to throw this straight to Hunter because I know nothing about Resident Evil, so take <clears> it away, Hunter. Yep. My Twitter break. Alrighty, so <laughs> Resident Evil 8 continues to look fascinating. I think what they showed here was better than the last time they showed it. It just had a little bit more to it. It's got this very kind of like gothic fairy tale kind of horror vibe going to it. And that's interesting everything i've heard about it 
as far as the details of what's going it's going to involve sound like it's going to have a bunch of things that were originally concepts for like four Mm -hmm. that didn't make it to four so that's also fascinating to see if they can bring to life what they wanted to in some version of that all those years ago Mm -hmm. i still need to play seven since it's a continuation of that storyline but are you maybe i won't play seven i'll just go (laughs) i'll just go straight into eight i mean you've got time dude you've got time this game i do for a while so you've got time but no i mean i was it it looks interesting that's one of my things is i'm not a horror guy so i'm just like yeah it, it looks cool i guess resident i don't know it's very i feel like it's it's not i feel like it's weird. It's like this weird cross between... I said it during our reaction. It feels like a weird cross between 7 and 4. Like, it feels really weird. Yeah. It's like, you can see... It's obviously on the 7 engine, and you can see where... You can see the hints of 7 in, in it throughout it, but it feels a lot more... I don't know what's the, the correct word. A bit more... It's less pure horror and more action horror, kind of. You can tell that there's a lot more to do in this yeah. game uh, than there was yeah. in... Yeah, it uh, looks like it's going about achieving its scares in a different way than say the resi 2 remake yeah would or maybe even how seven did i don't know though well, so yeah. hopefully hopefully they don't wreck the balance of that because resident evil 4 did a good job of still being creepy mm-hmm. while also tilting more towards the action side of things and that balance was fine it was the next two that ruined that and they were like oh let's just shoot everything yay why not just punch a boulder and uh, you know that as well Mm -hmm. yeah but yeah but i'm optimistic about it with resident evil 8 i feel like what they're doing is as hunter said like they're trying to take what was good from four and push it as much as they can but will it work for them? That's the thing. We've been in this. I feel like Resident I... Evil is getting this close to being a yearly franchise at this point. Like it's mm. getting so close. Uh, yeah, I still want them to chill out on that. Yeah, this will be they the, need to chill be the, out. This will be the third year in a row that we get a Resident Evil game, and it's like. And, and also, Resident Four remake is happening. At some yeah, point. I hope that there's like a year or two gap between Resi Eight and the Four remake. Hey. All I'm going to say is, let's compare this to another favorite uh, yearly franchise, Assassin's Creed, right? When it started as a yearly franchise, the first one in that order, Assassin's Creed 2, absolutely love that video game. It's really great. Followed by Brotherhood, a game that is a lot more of the same. Some people think it's all, I think it's as good as well, but a lot of people think that it's just, it doesn't have the polish as much as, 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 I didn't say resident, as Assassin's Creed 2. (laughs) Yeah, it's less polished. It's following the pattern here of RE2 and 3 Remake. And then after that was Revelations, a game that was more of the same again, but I thought it was shit. And then if we go after that, Assassin's Creed 3, fucking hell, we're not even talking about that one. So let's hope it doesn't follow that path because that'd be fucking tragic. Uh, We're going to move on because we're. I like liking Resident Evil again. <laughs> yeah, but you know. Well, stop it. Yeah, it's about time you stopped, Hunter. It's about time you stopped. Uh, speaking Start of liking them, something else. Yeah, speaking of which, I'm gonna throw these two Fine. together. Uh, one game's in the middle of them, um, so I'm just gonna throw these together because we've seen both of these before, and I just want an, uh, impressions. A uh, Death Loop was shown next, which I still think looks incredible. Um, it mm. looks like a load of fun. And it's made by, I've said this before, it's made by Arcane. They did the Dishonored games, and they're so good. And I love this idea of a death, of being in a constant time loop and having to eliminate everybody in one death and having to figure it all out. We were all like, is this a separate level? They've confirmed it isn't a separate level. That's just one of the ways nice. that you can get two people, two of the eight targets in the same area so you can assassinate them at the same time. But my God, just, I'd love to actually see like, fully like what is this we keep seeing these really fancy trailers trying to explain it right but i don't feel i just want a developer to go okay this is death loop finally here it is this is what it is and this is what your goal is because i feel like everyone keeps getting confused but i love i love the look of this game and i'm definitely going to get it because it's got the style of dishonored but the combat that arcane's really known for at this point and i feel like it's going to be a winner again and i don't want it to fail as much as dishonored failed because dishonored was a very good franchise that just didn't sell that well. Yeah. Anyone else got anything to add about their flute? Because uh, I'm the only one. The really level of... Uh, <laughs> no, 
I think it looks good. I just don't have much to say on it as far as anything new to add to the conversation. Yeah. You know, the level of uh, replay replayability and creativity that we'll be able to finally be shown off once that game eventually comes out is going to mm-hmm. be crazy. I'm really looking forward to seeing the speed run, to be honest. I think yeah. that's going to be yeah. fucking crazy, seeing everyone do it in one life. I feel like that's going to be really cool. I also really like the idea of being done with the game and then being able to play as the other assassin hunting someone else down. I feel like that's also a really fun concept. I feel like that's really fun having because you've got a rival assassin following you and it can be AI, but you can also turn it so that it's someone else online coming after you. And I feel like that's just a really fun idea of having someone else trying to hunt you down the entire time. And it's a really cool idea of asymmet- like asymmetrical uh, mm-hmm. co-op in a way <laughs> or PvP. It's really fun. I like it. Yeah. Uh, the other can I get some words in about that? Yeah, go on. Um, I like the concept mm. about one shotting just you know what you need to do. Yeah. The only issue that I see with it is people are going to get frustrated. Yeah, but at the same time, this is like yeah, this is it's one of those get good games. It's like yeah. with, Arcane's known for these kinds of games. It's like again, Dishonored. Dishonored, if you don't go and play that, if you don't play Dishonored the way it's meant to be played, it's painful and people don't <laughs> like it. But it's one of those yeah. things, it's like Souls. The, the, it's one of those games where it's not supposed to appeal to everybody. It's not supposed to be your Call of Duty run and gun, everybody gets to fucking be the hero. It's 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 a it's a very much it's a puzzle shooter, if anything. Like it's very much it it's taken inspiration as much from Portal as it has Call of Duty, where it's one of those ideas of the whole world, from the looks of it, is a puzzle you need to solve. Where you don't have enough time yeah, to kill these eight seems people. Seems very like, Hitman esque, like yeah, that. like Hitman as well. Where it's like, oh, I need to get multiple people in these locations. It's why I love this trailer that they showed, where they were like, oh, one of them's a scientist, and he keeps making this breakthrough every day. But if you fuck up his if you fuck up his breakthrough, then he'll be depressed and go and drink with his friend in the castle, so you can deal with both of them at the same time. And it's just having those kinds of ideas. <laughs> I can't wait to just have those. It's one of the, it's like Breath of the Wild syndrome, right? Where you just have, oh, here's a really stupid idea. Let's see if it works, and then it pays off. Yeah, I just that's the kind of thing that I'm really looking forward. Yeah, to. it's like one of those I'm, games that just rewards creativity. Yeah, which it should. As, he, yeah. as you said, I'm interested in seeing the speed run because I'm like I'm expecting to see some like actually just mind blowing stuff like triple kills maybe or like it'll be interesting to like see. That how it's done that's that's for sure we'll yeah see. and then the other game that i just want to quickly mention in this one before we talk about dmc is um yeah. <laughs> oddwell salt storm we saw more of that God. and it feels so weird seeing oddworld at a playstation like these big events like still it still feels oh, weird they show it every time yeah it's weird but get used to it ethan <laughs> i don't want to see any more kyle i don't want well, to see any more tough shit no, it looks good. <laughs> None of us are Oddworld people. Really? Uh, Gary, yeah. if you're an Oddworld person, what do you think then? Because so, <laughs> if you think you're an Oddworld Having played person... pretty much the entire Oddworld franchise. Go yeah. on, then. What's your um, Congratulations. I can see why it's shown off at this conference, or like shown again, I guess. It's because Oddworld did start on the PlayStation. Yeah, but then we can say yeah. anything, dude. Why the fuck is it... <laughs> yeah. yeah, why, why but... anything there? Why is it Croc there, that... dude? <laughs> I think that no one if it's going to crack. follow sort of the idea of this is a re-envisioning of um, Abe's Exodus. Not even a re re-inv- At this point, I just think it's a new... It's, it's just a new game. Yeah. So. It's just what it would probably is a new. It I, probably yeah, is a new game at this point. It is, right? it is 100% new. They've already said. It's Law and Lining. Yeah. Issue. What if we did this game? What if we had done an actual full game instead of Exodus at this point. Yeah. What we've done. Um, I think like all the explosions and all the effects are completely over the top and I love it. Like I'm, I want them to have like the puzzle platforming return from <laughs> um, say A1 and 2. Um, oh, that'd sure. be great. It's just one of those interesting ones where it's like I hope it gets to a point where Oddworld can just be Oddworld. Like I feel like this is them really trying to make it more people interested and i'm still not but it's one of those <laughs> i hope it goes well because yeah, yeah. i know it's it's odd well if there's something you have to grow up with i'd say like if you didn't grow up with odd world this is going to be very difficult to get into it's very weird but yeah those are those two come on then 
Hunter Opinions, the MC5 Special Edition. Get it over okay. with. Oh, baby. All right. So all of the things that they add are actually pretty genius ideas for to show off, like, the PS5 as opposed to PS4. Because mm-hmm. the Legendary Dark Knight mode, for example, has a bunch of enemies, like, exponentially more on the screen than you'd ever get in the base game. Mm-hmm. So... That's a good way to show off that. Also, the re- the RE engine is just great as far as visual appeal. So, like, showing the ray tracing and all that hot buzzword stuff there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Teraflops. Well, yeah, et cetera. So on and so forth. Playing as Virgil, that's great. Um, turbo mode, mm-hmm. you know, adds game. I believe it's times 1.2 game speed is what turbo mode is so you know click it the game goes faster <laughs> good stuff but yeah uh, are you gonna double dip should be uh 100 maybe not <laughs> right away because i don't know when i'm gonna have the ps5 but it'll definitely happen eventually i could see them maybe even potentially i wouldn't be surprised if they didn't but the in forest special edition they added the additions of a trish and lady as playable characters too so i don't so i could see them maybe doing that as well i mean it's a, it's a japanese game the, the, the everyone knows the ultimate edition isn't the ultimate edition the, the, we'll fucking we'll tell you when you're done you know we'll tell <laughs> this is like definitely cray 5 just did so well for them it did commercially and critically that i'm just happy that it's getting i'm the ps5 enhanced vision Good stuff, you know. Even if it isn't free, yeah. Fair play, but, yeah. 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 I'll support Probably worse. Series. It's only forty dollars as well. It's not like they're making you. They're not charging full price for it. So mm-hmm. yeah. Wait, oh, no, it's thirty dollars. Actually, I'm lied. It's thirty dollars, not forty dollars. Wow. Wait, that's that's literally a steal. Like if you haven't that played is it, really good, especially for like Kyle. You I'm haven't played check, it yet, I'm so I'm gonna. Yeah, I am gonna go check. <laughs> Let me. You guys keep talking. You guys keep talking. But yeah. If I really did really want to play DMC five at some point, but that is the steal. Hunter told me yeah. not to and wait for the special edition, and I said okay. Yeah, because I knew it was coming are, soon. A month later, yeah. special yeah. edition now exists. I'll, ne- I'll never steal your theory wrong. <laughs> you <laughs> never have. Console. But yeah, Hunter. Thanks, um, best buddy. The thing about special editions in Devil May Cry is it's like play as virgil what edition. is special about them <laughs> go explain that well well you think play as virgil stuff. they add normally like a difficulty or two like in like in the special edition of three oh, you know time. us americans got very hard mode because it was the little mode in between the <laughs> japanese normal and whatever i forget the oh yeah was, wasn't uh, like english hard no english normal actually Japanese hard or something. Yeah, that was yeah. how it went in the PS2 original release of DMC3. And then in DMC4, they just added, you know, Legendary Dark Knight mode, Turbo mode, and uh, Virgil, Lady, and Trish. Very cool. The uh, 4 special uh, edition, that is. Yep. How's Turbo the research coming, cool. Ethan? I, I genuinely cool. cannot find this prize. Dude. So now, Hunter, for the people yeah. who I haven't played it. DMC, the MC5 before. special edition is launching digitally this November for forty dollars USD. And if you want to play, if you want the Virgil DLC for the regular edition on PS4, it's five dollars. There we go. Research ah, completed. cool! Wow. Research. Nice. <laughs> All right, Kyle, what was your question? I was just gonna say for the people that haven't played any DMC game yet, would five be a good jumping in point? Uh, I feel like any of them, except for maybe two, is a solid <laughs> jumping in point. Uh, except for play. maybe two. Uh, as far as like the gameplay and stuff, if you start with five, going backwards will be a little harder for you because it yeah, I won't bet. have as many bells and whistles just and all like that. Persona, dude, but just like Persona, just like Persona. If you <laughs> and you won't, you won't get as much of the like lore, but that's probably not what you're gonna play it for anyway. Right. So. <laughs> If you want, if you're interested in it and want to jump in, but haven't played the series yet, then go for it. I wouldn't say that your experience would be ruined at all. Mm-hmm. Right, very cool, very cool. Uh, uh, doesn't a uh, five in its story actually do like a full like detailing of the actual the story so far sort of thing? You can read some stuff about it. Yeah, I'm and then not, not reading. I but... I famously <laughs> remember just 
one page for Devil May Cry 2. Right. <laughs> they want to forget yeah. that game exists. Anyway, thank you for ruining my timestamp. Next up, FNFAF and FNFNF, FNAF. Can we just pass on this? Freddy's. Everyone love FNAF? Anyone? No. Anyone? Boring one trick pony. My favourite part about that trailer was that I was going to get my phone to check Twitter and the jump scare still got me. I was face away. That was funny. I couldn't even see the screen and the jump scare still got me and I don't know how. Um, go watch our reactions. To go watch our it. reaction. That one was funny because it was, God, it was. Yeah. It was is, better than anything they showed. You see it on my face that the jump scare happened and I wasn't all that shocked by that but I kind of like glanced up when Ethan like screamed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't you care about Five Nights at Freddy's. It's a mean scare. game. <laughs> yeah, I'm even. I mean, I'm also going to add the other one that none of us really care about as well. Fortnite's also available at launch. Ain't that a wonderful thing? Oh, Go look oh, at my oh, reaction oh, to Fortnite. Oh, Fortnite. Fortnite. You know, fucking take me out, kids. You know, hey, well, hey. I, I apparently know this guy. Enough movement. Hey, you know, Fortnite. We all love Fortnite. <laughs> Audio right. listeners, you just missed the best performance of your life. Um, but yeah, anyone well, got to be very pretty disappointed in him. As I say, go watch my reaction to Fortnite. What, it was how long fantastic. Have you about me doing this? Dude? What have you got to like, be doing this? Dude? I don't understand. No, like watch a reaction video on the my reaction. What's the next game? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. The next game is Demon Souls. You know, one oh one forty three. Cool, seventy dollars. <laughs> yeah, but let's ignore the fucking pricing because yes, it's yeah, like... ignoring the pricing, the game looks absolutely gorgeous. Like the amount of detail Bluepoint has put into that, as as it was mentioned, um, this is more than just a remaster. Oh, it's a remake. Yeah, Maybe, yeah, it's more yeah, than just a remake. Like, up, yeah, Bluepoint have done asset so asset much work here. And if anyone watched like the like extra trailers and stuff, you you may have realized that the sixth uh, like sort of column is there, and that oh, the might content. hint. Y- yeah, um, in the the original Demon Souls, there was only five columns, and the six and like the sixth column and is broken in the original. But in mm. this, the column is there, so that might actually be hinting to the cut content known as Northern Limit could oh, be in man. the game. My friend's going to do backflips over that. <laughs> yeah. One thing I will say is, I, I thought it was funny, I don't remember who said it, but I was watching someone's reaction, someone else's reaction um, to the Demon Souls trailer, and I, I thought it was hilarious that someone said, you can tell that From hasn't remade this because it's the best looking fucking Souls game I've ever seen. Like and so the, the, and the performance I laughed map. because I laughed because I was like, "You're right." Now that I think about it, as loved as the Souls games are, they never look good. Whereas this one actually looks like really pretty. Like, it and it like, also yeah. looked like it was performing at a stable frame rate. Oh, God, yeah. Bloodborne, man! <laughs> Everyone remembers Bloodborne, dude. <sighs> Bloodborne, that 26 <laughs> FPS, like it's great. It's that. It's great, but no, it looks really good. Yeah. Like if this, if it wasn't 70 and. When it goes cheaper, if there's any Souls game that I'm going to play, this looks like a great jumping in point. Because yeah. not only is it the yeah, start of the series, I but it's the simplest it'll be, it'll be for you to get into it, right? But it They might change... Gorgeous. There is some like really weird mechanics in Demon's Souls that I'm not going to get into, but uh, they might adjust them. Someone said also, which I thought was interesting, that the bit the gameplay that we saw was performance mode. Performance mode? Yeah, wait. Two modes look that good on the performance. Yeah, that mode. was performance mode. So if that's performance cool. mode, then God help us on what actual mode looks like. And if that wasn't performance mode, God looks like fidelity mode runs smooth as shit as well. So who cares? Yeah, like, like, I really yeah, hope that like the fidelity mode is like a stable thirty. Like Souls games need that it thirty will. FPS. It will, it will, it'll definitely be at least thirty. Long. It, I mean, it's blue yeah. point, so. And if the performance mode is 60, and I know that um, Bluepoint have experience with doing sort of a, uh, you know, a fidelity mode and a performance mode from their, um, what was it, uh, Shadow of Colossus on PS4. Yeah. Uh, I trust them to be able to 
do a very good I did on Pro. 30 FPS yeah, fidelity. Oh, right, I don't have a PS Pro, yeah. that's why. A very good 30 <laughs> FPS fidelity <laughs> mode and 60 FPS goober. performance mode. <laughs> We're gonna be can't wait for those Crash 4 30 FPS PS4 streams, boys. I can't wait. Oh, God. I can't wait for Crash 4 to be faster on 30 FPS. I can't wait. I can't wait for all those people who have gone out and bought pros for this game to just get dunked on, dude. Can't dude, wait. if this if Crash 4 is faster at 30 FPS, that, that's gonna be so whack. I'll laugh. And if it isn't, oh well, I'll just shove it in my PS5 instead. Win win, boys, win win. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Uh, we talked about all the games, but one thing that I think we really need to talk about, which I personally think that this is the unsung little jewel of this event. It is definitely yeah, the unsung collection. jewel. So for anyone that didn't was paying wasn't paying attention at the end of the of the conference before they showed the prices, they announced the PS Plus collection. Which at first I I don't remember which one of it. I think it was it was I think it was me. I was like, oh shit, this is Game Pass. And then no, I I. It was me. I thought oh, yeah. it was like PS Now, like PS Now included into um, yeah. No, it's, it's PS Plus. Kind of. It's kind of a Game Pass competitor, except you don't have to pay extra for it if you're already a PS Plus subscriber. So what the yeah. PS Plus collection is yeah. is what they're classing as 16 of the best PlayStation 4 games. Questionable, you choose. I don't think Battlefield <laughs> One's one of the 16 best PS4 games, but you know, neither is Days Gone. Or no Days Gone. Or Days Gone. But or, or FF15. You know. What in? Or FF15. Or FF15. Not a chance. Yeah. Wait, was FF15 in yeah, there? Yeah, it's in there. It was. Yeah. But basically, selection of the six. If it's Royal Edition, it's not. It's Who not. Cares? Well, it's, it's Who basically cares? P5. So <laughs> P5's on there, guys. Go play it. Um, yeah. No, don't. Space play P5. Royal. Play Royal. Yeah, go play Royal. Like the Royal to go cheap. Space not P5. Sponsored. Not sponsored. Oh, oh, Atlas, pay me. I, I pay you can pay me. Sega, pay me. You don't have pay to pay me. me. Just give me a fucking game, dude. I'll I'll say anything. Give uh, me a copy of Valkyria Five. That's all you gotta do. Atlas, yeah, again. Uh, you... no, no, it's Sega. Yeah, it's a Sega. Yeah, yeah. I'm not supporting Valkyria on this podcast, dude. How dare you? How dare okay, you? it looks like I'm banned from future episodes. I'm, yeah, anti I'm, I'm Valkyria. Oh, no, the PS Plus collection is 16 of. Uh, 16 PS4 games that every PS Plus game, uh, a PS Plus subscriber will just have instant access to on their PS5 from launch. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's... for someone like me who has genuinely played like 12 of the 16 games and the other four I don't care about, it kind of sucks. <laughs> but yeah. the people that haven't played God of War, who haven't played Hor uh, Last of Us, was Horizon on there? I don't even think Horizon is on there, actually. I Horizon... I I if it wasn't, it should be. I think it was on there. Okay, I'm going to say Horizon. I should probably... I, should I could try this. Get the list. Someone, get the list. Someone get the list up while I lie. Right? Persona 5, whatever. If you haven't played these games, they've just gone, hey, even if you aren't interested in all the games in our launch lineup, as long as you've bought a PS5, here have 16 of the best PS4 games. Just yeah, and you go. Have something to play. Have something okay, to I got play the list later. here. I got Go the on, list. Read the list. Um, so we got Batman Arkham Knight. Pretty good, yeah. It's pretty good. If you're um, on the Batman Battlefield field. 1. Eh. Days, uh, Bloodborne. I mean, hey. Souls game. Like, if you haven't played Bloodborne, it was on PS Plus, I believe. Many people's like, favorite games of all yeah. time, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, Days Gone, if. Yeah, that's. I've heard, way. I've heard like, eh, it's. Yeah, I've really heard like okay. what we would probably call Some like. People a I've heard love it though. Some people do love yeah. it though. I've heard a couple of people that are very passionate about Days Gone, so you know. Detroit Become Human. I My mean, name's Connor. Mm -hmm. If you <laughs> like Connor. My name is Connor. There's Connor's a third of a good game <laughs> in there. That's a good one. Fallout Four. That's an interesting one because it's better than seventy six. I also um, have Fallout 4, haven't played it. Look, it's still sealed, kids. Still sealed. Woo. Yeah, um, Final Fantasy Good 15, as we mentioned. God of War, as we mentioned. Infamous Second Son. If you haven't played an Infamous game, I would say... Oh God, give that a shot. Like, games. Infamous well, games are Infamous actually yeah. really, really good. What's next? Second Son is pretty uh, solid, Next is yeah. The Last Guardian. Uh, oh, well, there you go. We've got a gameplay. I like that yeah. game. Uh, so oh, it's fine. over in the cabinet where I threw the where I got Final yeah. Fantasy from, but I'm not going to grab it. So, yeah, Last Guardian, if you haven't played that, I don't think many people have actually, because it was like that one game that was supposed to come to PS3 but didn't. It was in development. People who like, were really years. excited about it bought it, and then everyone else just went. Eh. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Last That's of Us cool. remastered. Yeah. That is the Last of Us. Have it digitally, can't pull it out. Aww. Um, <laughs> Monster Hunter World, if you're I got into another Monster one! Hunter. Yeah! I mean, Come we're going to be talking a little bit about Monster Hunter later biggest money well. maker ever. <laughs> yeah, I've heard, I've heard um, nothing but good things about Monster Hunter World, so... Yeah, yeah. Mortal Kombat 10, I mean, oh, 11's cool. out, so you're behind. You're not going to be finding matches online there. Uh, well, Persona 5, because it's, it's base Persona 5, it's not Royal. Best I'll one. Just... Yeah, it's oh, base see. Persona 5. <laughs> um, you Ratchet have a problem, Clank. Ethan. If you Ratchet Clank is absolutely excellent. Underrated, like, underrated exclusive. Underrated. It it's is really good. Insanely good. Like I wish the, best, more people play. the best 3D platformers of this generation. Like, honestly, underrated as fuck. Like, play Ratchet and Clank is really good. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. I'm just oh, interested. Is I'll this, Yo, this going to cover the VR version <laughs> as well? Or well yeah, I yeah, guess that covers VR. VR well. mode is included as a free thing anyway for Resident Evil, so I assume. Ah, okay, cool. Um, Uncharted 4, A Thieves' End. If you haven't played Uncharted, I mean... Uncharted 4, A Thieves' End is fucking fantastic. Like, honestly. It it's Naughty Dog. Wasn't like, that a plus Naughty Dog game earlier this year? Produce yeah. excellent games. Absolutely. And then the final one is Until Dawn. If you oh. ah, Quick side story. I own the first four Uncharted games all on the PS4, and I haven't played a single one of them. <laughs> That's about right. I'm always going to PS4. Kyle. My PS4 came bundled with Uncharted 4. So then I saw, and then I nice. saw the Uncharted trilogy in the store for pretty cheap, and I'm like, yeah, man. Well, and then it's just been sitting yeah. on my shelf. They're good games. Forever. They're pretty good. I got Uncharted my PS4 in 2017. The remaster collection is really, really good. Like oh, by Blue Point. Blue. Oh, I mean, it's Blue Point. Like I the masters of the remaster. Like, I don't know. I no. I always say I like the first three Uncharted's, but the only one that I absolutely love is Four. Four, I absolutely adore. Like it's one of my favorite games on PS4. Again, probably I'm guessing like. like four is just like now has it concluded like yeah well nathan drake's story is done yeah it's, it's concluded. concluded drake's story Wasn't yeah there a five no not yet no, there was a lost legacy that was like a spin-off with chloe ah there you go <laughs> i got that yeah. one as well lost Chloe's lost legacy cool. was on was gonna also be very like good. a yeah small it was dlc but it was too big so they decided to and then it got too it big yeah so yeah also very yeah. good but now uncharted 4 it's not just the combat. Like I love the combat in that game because it's a lot more stealthy and it's a lot less of like there's still a, there's still a set piece or two, but it's a lot less blockbuster and it's a lot more personal. And I just I don't know if it's just because I'm a massive Neil Druckmann fan, but the way that he writes his stories is so well done and so human that I just love that story. Like it's a compared to the first three, and I love Amy Hennig's work in the Uncharted world. Like it's great. But Uncharted 4, there's something about that game which I feel like is underrated as fuck in terms of not the gameplay, but the story. Like, the story, I think, in Uncharted 4 is really well done. So, yeah. Hmm. I'd recommend it. But, yeah, those are the 16 games in the PS Plus collection. Which Maybe I, one day I'll get to it. I think it's yeah, a deal, um, to be honest. If you haven't I'd say with game, most of them, if you have not played them, give them a shot. Like, they're free to download. Especially so. for most people, even if you're just a FIFA or a Call of Duty Andy, right, who only buy these new consoles and play FIFA and Call of Duty, <laughs> guess what? To play FIFA and Call of Duty online, you need PS Plus. Congratulations, you just got 16 games. So yeah, get you some culture 16. in your life and play some Persona 5. <laughs> Do you like weed? <laughs> culture. Well, I'd say you'd, you have 16 games there. I'd say 10 of them are among the best that have been on the PS4. Yeah, And I would say that out of those 16, there would be at least one that was for someone. Maybe yeah. not everything's for everyone, yeah, but like one of them ten for of someone. them will be excellent. You essentially so. have every... You, you have nearly all the good PlayStation exclusives, though, just the ones that aren't from this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The all ones from this year. Years, and Spider-Man. But spoiler alert, Spider-Man's Spider got a remaster coming out on PS5, which you can get with <laughs> Miles Morales. So you essentially have everything that you could, uh, like, you could want, really. Yeah. It's, I honestly think it's a really good thing. We don't even need the PS4 for anymore. <laughs> Goodbye. Throw it out. Um, Goodbye. Um, but no, Who else I... wants to spike their PS4 with me? Hell yeah. Nah, um, I need that. I'll spike still. a Wii U with someone. No. I'm no. Good. But no. The Wii U's not on trial. <laughs> Yet. But no. I've got to hand it. Still to... getting games. Yeah. I've got to hand it to Sony because 
it's a great way also to show backwards compatibility. It's also put a huge relief on my fucking chest that Persona 5 works. I mean, 99% of games work now. It's been confirmed that... Yeah, 99% of games work. They're, it's gonna just they're, not saying they're not saying 100 because there's going to be that one game out there that is just so spaghetti. Oh, it's, I, I, I'm going to place a bet on this right now. Dude. If any game oh, doesn't boy. work, it's Little Big Planet 3. I'm placing a bet on that one because that game doesn't work with name changes. So if it doesn't work with name changes, I just uh, think it might just not work with PS5. So that's my guess. And that's yeah. why Sackboy's coming to PS5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, it all comes yeah. full that, circle. That's understandable. Jim Ryan Jim Ryan was like, we can fix Little Big Planet 3 or make a 3D World clone. Ah, fuck it. Just make the 3D World clone. Can't be arsed. Fix Little Big Planet 3. And then Nintendo said, what if we re-released 3D World? <laughs> it's the only good re-release that they're doing, so yeah, if, uh, <laughs> yeah. fair enough. But yeah, like, um, the reason they're saying 99% is there's going to be those very, very oddball games that just... Yeah. And they're so cool. spaghetti. Or Sorry, like, Life of Black Tiger. Or something like someone did an Andy Gavin and rewrote how the PS4 worked. <laughs> yeah, someone did an and Andy Gavin. And that doesn't Gavin. translate well to PS5. Like something like that. It'll be something like you that. Can... Does your PS4 code rewrite the PS5? No. <laughs> it's not going to run. Well, there you go. So there you go. That's PS Plus Collection, which I think is a great thing. It's a great thing for. Honestly, yeah, yeah, if, if you don't... haven't played half the games on that list, yeah. um, I'm just going to do a quick file. One game that you recommend to everyone from that list. Oh boy, I'm not going to go for the obvious one, so I'm going to go for the non-obvious I'll one. I'll do it Persona 5. There you go, Kyle, to take it. Yeah, Legitimately, even like even non-JRPG fans love it. It's. I have a friend that hate, yeah. that calls everything it's from Japan game, weeb, whether, <laughs> yeah. whether, it's, whether it's anime or not, and he says that it's in, so his, it's in his top five games of the PS4 generation. Like, honestly, even uh, Even um, yeah. Jacob, he... He doesn't play any JRPG outside of Pokemon, which I don't even count as a JRPG. Neither do I. But he yeah. played Royal and loved it, so... Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, and you can become a sad little uh, person on the internet like me. Um, if somehow you missed Persona 5 in the two times it's been released... There still is, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It was big, but it's still not big enough where I can say there's still plenty of people that when they get a PS5 just have access to it now and should 100% check yeah. it out. So yeah. Go check it Obviously, out. you have access to the less complete version, but... Even that's better than not still experiencing there. this, right? You like... still get a really, really good story. Yeah. And the best so... part is that the Royal Editions are that great, that even if you if you adore the game, you can go back into Royal and play it all over again, and you'll still there's still True. so much new content there that you'll feel satisfied you'll still pick you up back. new stuff. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was the best part of the game. Yeah. Jason, what game are you going to pick from that list? I know what Hunter's going to pick, so I'm going to pick the one that uh, Hunter's not going to pick. I'm going to pick God of War. Um, I think God of War is... Uh, I, I was assuming you're picking Horizon Hunter. But um, <laughs> Horizon wasn't on that list. Oh, is it not on the list? Yeah. Oh, cool. No, so fuck it's not it. on the list. I'm stealing God of War then. God of War <laughs> is fucking fantastic. Um, it is, in my opinion, in terms of Sony Studios games, I love Horizon, but there's something special about God of War. That they turned this game that was just a hack and slash with a really angry bald guy on the cover. <laughs> really <laughs> angry bald guy. And he was just extremely angry Pretty into scary. this compelling father and son story, which is one of the most personal stories of the generation, I feel. And honestly, Cory Barlog's a wizard. How he made that game, like how he directed that game, I'll never know. Like he did such a great job. And the team at Santa Monica made what I think is one of the best looking games on PS4. So yeah, definitely check out God of War. I absolutely adored it more than I thought I would. Hunter, go for it. All right. Well, I guess since you stole God of War, I'll say Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> uh, uh, you go know, team. 3D platformers felt rather sparse this generation. So when I played that one, it was a real breath of fresh air because it felt like something I had missed for a long time, and it was done really well. And I was very happy the whole time I played it. 2016 and, was the resurgence know. for platformers, essentially. That was the first year yeah. where we finally started getting stuff, and then 2017 kick-started it. You know, Mario, yeah. And Mario and Crash, so. and everyone came back. Mm -hmm. And it'd be a nice little, you know, appetizer for the new one coming. Rift Apart, which is my most anticipated PS5 game at the moment, so yeah, there you go. 
Gary, go on. Yeah. You said, did you have so one? pretty much all the games that I was going to pick have been picked. So um, <laughs> that kind of sucks. Just say one, Gary, and then I'll whisper why it's you should you should play it. I will say I your opinion. The Last of Us Remastered. Oh, it's very good. That's a really uh, good story. Um, very safe choice. <laughs> having played that on the PS3. Um, the game, even on PS3, looks absolutely gorgeous. Still, yeah. Like, and but this remaster, it is improving on what already was a fantastic looking PS3 game. It's a great game. remaster. It's an actually, it's a really great remaster. And like the amount of re- effort they put into the remaster, it isn't just a okay, we're just gonna just up the resolution, maybe work on a few textures. They do so much to improve that game that. Comparing Last of Us Remastered to Last of to what Last of Us Two looks like, they almost go hand in hand with how they look. You can like, see that it was a stepping point. Like they do, they look great. Yeah, it was a stepping point to the progression to Last of Us Two. I'm not going to talk too much about Last of Us Part Two. It's fucking great. Because... Then everyone should play it. And if you don't like yeah, it, really you can go fuck off because but it's actually Last of Us Remastered. <laughs> from yeah, you tell them, Ethan. From past, I'll die on that hill, Hunter. I'll yeah, die on that hill. <laughs> I'll die on it. <laughs> The Last of Us Remastered being considered with you. one of the best PS3 games, and I'm just, and yeah. might might bring up PS3 game because yeah. it got a remaster and yeah, it's, it's great. still amazing. Like, I'll say this day. as someone that isn't a massive fan of linear shooter like campaign shooters and isn't a fan of horror, I absolutely adore The Last of Us. Yeah. So even if you're someone that's like, oh, I don't like third-person shooters, corridor kind of shooters, or I don't like horror games, give Last of Us a chance because I fucking fell in love with that world like everyone else did, even if the gameplay isn't my cup of tea. And especially in, as well with part two, whether you love it or hate it, people care that much about that world that they had a strong reaction to that game, whether they liked <laughs> yeah. it or not. Yeah. That's how and as we great. say, these great. games will be free if you have your PS Plus. Exactly, free. So why not? Uh, finally. Give them a shot. I didn't realize we go this de- in depth into the review of the conference. So this is all we're talking about this week, kids. We'll save the others' shit for next oh, week. Cool. We'll save that good, good for next week, Hunter. We don't want to waste it all today because we're gonna. Oh we've got... man, let's see if let's see if I talk about Hades on the podcast before I ever review up for it. <laughs> Are you actually gonna do a review? Are you actually? Gonna if do I it? beat it in a timely fashion, then yeah. You absolute legend. Right. See, <laughs> that's what we love to see. We love to see it. But finally, they, they had a one more thing, that, Jim. Jim Ryan came out, you know, in between saying random crap that doesn't make sense because Jim Ryan doesn't know what he's talking about. He was like, we have one more thing. Um, and then they played the God of War music, essentially, and that's about it. Uh, God of War Ragnarok <laughs> has been announced, and they said 2021. I don't think it'll ever hit 2021. There's not a chance nah, in a million years. Pushed. I don't think there's a chance in hell we see that game next year because it's only been it will have been it, they will have made that game in three years and I just don't see that happening. Yeah. I mean, I could see it happening because a lot of the sort of engine work that they have there is probably brought forward from God of War Four or the Dad yeah. Boy, whatever or you, you want to call it, PS Four, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah, God of um, Four. Thank you, Hunter. Thank you. That was a me joke right there. Yeah, it was. Um, no, but yeah, no, like I'd I'd say a lot of the work that they're bringing forward from God of War PS4. So it's going to be a similar case for Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two. Like a lot of the engine they have there, they have their combat system. They have, probably have their menu system sorted out as well. Um, for those that watched the reveal trailer, yes, I could tell it was God of War just from the snow. I think I everyone not, did. I think yeah, everyone I was not did. Everyone saw for, snow for and everyone was just like, apart from you, Kyle, yeah, because you didn't play. <laughs> yeah. Anyone that plays God of War, as soon as they were like, one more thing and snow started falling. Every, uh, Gary yeah. said it. Someone said it. It's, Gary, you said it, it's God of War. And I'd already clicked in my head, but I just was like, it's not, though. It can't be. I'm like, it's God of War. How? <laughs> yeah. And there it is. And like I say, game of the generation, one of the games of the generation is the. What, is the like, one of the games of the generation and why. War. Uh, Ethan recommended it. It's I think it was fucking incredible. Yeah, like from it. that, fr- the free oh, oh, oh. PS Plus games. God of War is incredible. God love it. And yeah, the fact that really we good. knew that a second one was coming anyway because of course a second one. But we didn't think it yeah. could be this soon. But this doing, yeah. And I just, I've I've heard a few 
people speculate that it's not like a full sequel into that i say no i don't think yeah i I don't think sequel it's a full sequel why would you waste the title ragnarok on something (laughs) incremental i would just say that's foolish i understand how you can do a miniature 1.5 spider-man i can understand how you do a miniature uncharted story how the hell you can release sense. God of War and do a miniature story? No, fuck no. no. Like, this is, yeah, it. This is God of You can't do that. Now, the real question is, Indeed is Corey would. working on it? That's the real question, because he's been silent ever since it's come out. So I don't know if Corey's even working on it, but it's definitely a full game. Whether Corey's on it or not, yeah. it's definitely a full game. Cause yeah, full game or not. Jason Schreier said about a year ago, which I thought was interesting, which, do you trust Jason at this point? Who knows? He says a lot of things, this Jason some of them are true (laughs) but he specifically said that there was two games being worked on at santa monica and one of them's the sequel to god of war and the other one's a new ip and jason was led to believe that Corey was working on the new ip and not god of war 2 but it'll be interesting interesting. yeah it'll be interesting to see what this new game is but i i loved god of war and i can't wait for this is a sequel, Ragnarok. Eh? He might not be working on it directly, but he might be sort of a guiding his, person. Was, yeah, it was, that make sense? The story was his ba- baby, right? I'm sure he's still like, I, I assume even if he isn't directing it, he was still a writer on it. Like he's probably the yeah. writer on it or something yeah. still. And just observing the project to make sure or it's like, going yeah, in the correct direction. Basically doing what Nomura does right now with Final Fantasy VII, where he's <laughs> not like, Oh, and Kingdom Hearts, really, where he's just there. He comes up with the gobbledygook, and then the, the other <laughs> the other people go monkey brain. Go. Mm. Oh yeah, the other people are the monkey brains. Okay, <laughs> they're all monkey yeah. brains. They work on Kingdom Hearts Hunter. They're all monkey brains. <laughs> the thing is, like, you got a point. Kingdom Hearts is just. I, I don't even want to get into the story of that. Greatest story of the generation. We're not gonna. That's a whole yeah, there's, not there's not videos on YouTube. YouTube. We're already running go, go, go watch one of those videos on YouTube that explains the entire Kingdom Hearts story. We're already We're running late, but no, God of, God of War. Still miss stuff. God of War. Can't wait. It's going to be great. So there we go. But, yeah. And that was the end. So there we uh, go. Can we Hooray. just cover the uh, release dates quickly for the PS5? Go for it, finally. We'll talk about So, uh, I believe what? it was September 12th for Japan. Uh, November. Yeah, November, th- November 12th, yeah. Oh, November, not September. Yeah, September 12th was a week ago. <laughs> yeah, that happened November already. 12th for Japan. I can't it. Already. <laughs> it was yeah. a scratch-off <laughs> thing that I kept joking about. Wheel it yeah. in, boys. Wheel in, dude. <laughs> Monolith. Yeah, it's, it's it's massive, PS5. but no. Um, November twelfth for Japan, Australia, mm-hmm. New Zealand, and Americas. Don't and don't then... list them. Don't list them, dude. Just uh, November twelfth for everyone but Europe. everywhere that is. Yeah, Europe. if you live in Europe and Africa, <laughs> I'm sorry. All I'm gonna say right is they also the mentioned guys, the Chinese yeah. release date is yet to be set. So oh, if you're in China, all I'm saying, guys, is I hope you're really looking forward to our PlayStation Five content because so far the only person that actually has a pre-order is me, and I get it a week <laughs> late anyway. So let's that's gonna be great. The, the best part is, and I'll say this, I wasn't mad about the release date. The thing I'm mad about is that Spider-Man Miles Morales, because it's coming out on PS4, also comes out on PS4 a week later, so we're just getting a full-on delay of that game by then. <laughs> so now, oh, every, it's like a Marvel film. I'm going to have to fucking duck and cover because, like, literally everyone will finish that game by the time I even get my hands on it. So, great. Love it. Thank you, Sony. You can at least give me a PS4 version to play it. Yeah, the like, game. why didn't they yeah, just, like, great. release the PS4 so version at the same time? Because they don't want to stop the PS5 worldwide. sales, Gary. Think about it. True. Yeah. Yeah. But, I yeah, understand why. It just Hunter, sucks for Ethan, Hunter and Kyle, if you do play the PS4 version, you're not allowed to say anything. Like, Oh, no, they can, they can 100% get that first impression. I don't care. Gary, Gary try and nail. silence me. We need <laughs> that thumbnail. I will right-click you right we, now on Discord. Gary, we, <laughs> need mute. That, Gary, we need that thumbnail. We need those clicks. Dude. I'm not. I'm just going to have to take one for the team and go, cool, I hope you're having fun. Tell me all about it. It'll be like this. Like, Tell me more. <laughs> As I slowly kill myself on the inside because Jim Ryan says that I'm not good enough to have a PS5 on November 12th. <laughs> <laughs> you love to see it, but there you go. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Jim Ryan. Thanks, Jim Ryan. So, what were your over- so like we said overall score? What would you give it, dude? What would you give that? What shall we do? Are we doing like a? a- are we doing an A? Are we doing a grade system? Or are we doing, a a- thumbs are we doing a thumbs up? Thumbs <laughs> up. 
Give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up like what uh, I left on the video. Like when you should I'd say like give it a score out of ten. Like why? A why? 10 scale. Why? What in God's name is a ten out of ten video game conference? Yeah, I just ten out of ten never exists. I'd give it an yeah. A, dude. I'd give it an A. I had a right there we go. fun time. Thumbs up, A. It was all right. I liked it. I'd give it an A minus. The highs were really high, but also Fortnite and FNAF happened. Yeah, dude. Well, you know what they say, dude. When it's time everything to floss, else was great, though. Time to floss, dude. You know. Uh, oh, Ethan, don't do it again. <laughs> uh, a, thumbs up, etc. Cool. It was good. I liked now, it. I'm gonna take the weird one here. I'm gonna say, say it's just just give B it. plus. Okay, that'll do. Cool. Cool. Very yeah. Cool. No for, for me on B no, plus. Just just a score, dude. That's all you're getting. Just a score. <laughs> just a score. To reviewing. Welcome to reviewing. Welcome to IGN. Where we People don't care about the explanation anyway. IGN, that was a joke. Don't come after me. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure some of you actually write a review, and not just write the score. Anyway. We'll leave it at that. That has been our show, everybody. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. We'll do our outros right now. Hunter, where can people find you? YouTube.com slash ReaperHunter23. <laughs> Very cool. Kyle, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at KDavisSRL, and you can also find me over on Twitch at Twitch.tv slash KDavisSRL. Very cool. Gary, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter, Loof. VC, VC. <laughs> I always mess that up. You can find me on Twitch, the same, and on YouTube, basically the same thing. There you go, and you can find me at Chaotic Ether on Twitter and Twitch. That's been our show. Thank you ever so much for listening slash watching. Remember, you can go to bit.ly slash the giggers and subscribe to our YouTube channel and get us to 100 subs so Kyle has to play Mario 64, and I might join him if I have if I'm not poor at that point. Because um, <laughs> I'd probably have to end up buying all stars, and I don't want to. You can't make me. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, you can get us on podcast services everywhere. Remember, Mondays, 5 p.m. UK time, 12 p.m. Eastern, you can find a brand new episode of Hot Gamers Only. We sometimes do extra episodes as well, so make sure to keep the podcast feed subscribed so you always know when a new episode is released. We have some fun content coming up. I'm trying to get this Tell Me Why review done. I've just been feeling like ass these past few days. Hopefully, it'll be up by Friday. We'll see. I don't know what to do with it, but we'll see. We'll have that talk off team. Uh, we've got another couple of reviews. Like I said, Hunter might be doing a review of Hades, so look out for that. Uh, Kyle has one for Clubhouse Games, yeah. which will one day see the light of day, I hope. That's Even if I dig into his drive and voice it myself, we will release it. We will release he's it. actually going to release 51 episodes for each individual game. Of course he isn't. Of course he isn't. <clears throat> um, other than that, I think that's everything we have to say. Next week, we'll just have another regular episode where Hunter will be giving us... Uh, probably given if he hasn't original review by then his full impressions on hades as well as you've also oh, I'll got, talk about it more yeah, it doesn't matter he can give his first impressions <laughs> on hades he can give his first impressions off kingdom of animal law re-reckoning because again that's a game that's again escaped an episode it's escaped two episodes in a row because we've run out of time but there you go. Ducking and dying. <laughs> yeah, next yeah. week is just the hunter episode next week is the hunter cat it's featuring just Ethan hunter and Kyle. Yeah, we're just gonna have him talk to himself oh, we'll just full screen it and walk away <laughs> oh That'll be very hard to be entertaining. We'll just draw like pictures of ourselves, <laughs> stick it to <laughs> our chairs, man, stick man, dude, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And then the week after that, it's the week you've been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. It'll be the Crash Bandicoot week, where we will have our first impressions on Crash for it's about time. We will be the only podcast in the planet, on the planet, outside the planet, in the planet. to do. <laughs> A spoiler yeah, cast hurts. on Crash 4. It's about time. We will be doing a spoiler cast as well on the Friday. Will there be a review if I can write quick enough? We'll see. Perhaps. But yeah. It also depends how quickly you can beat that game. Oh, I'll have that done in a day. Don't you fucking worry about it. But there, that has been our show. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. You're going to get world record in that world game. Record, dude. We'll Easy. Your eat your heart out. Um, Number one show. Crash 4 runner plays and Crash 2. Thank you ever so much for listening. We'll be back next week with more. But until then, that's been our show. See you later. Bye. See ya. Toodaloo.